Greetings, everyone. Pete here from Comic Book Users. Welcome to another edition of the show. As we are doing here in lockdown, we are recording these via Zoom. So on the other end of the line on the Zoom is my partner in crime, Mr. Wild Bill. What's happening, my friend? How you doing? Hey, good morning, Pete. Hello, comic book fans. Welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Users. Wow, artist tribute today to Jim Starlin, and uh, we got a lot of stuff to show you. <laughs> that we do, that we do, and uh, we figure, you know, why don't we start kind of from the beginning, which uh, many consider is like the one of the greatest series that he worked on, uh, Captain Marvel, right? That seems to be the, the the good starting point for any discussion of Jim Starlin. So uh, Bill is going to kick us off with some classic issues of Captain Marvel because he worked on not a huge run, but very very memorable because of course it. Uh, the artwork, the storylines, and the introduction of some great characters. So go ahead, Bill, kick it off. All right, so he first came on board with issue 25, I believe. And here it is. <laughs> Look at that. That's just really good art. And he went as far as from 25 to issue 34. He did a couple of pages in issue 36. He did a, quite a that a lot also. He would come in and do two or three pages and help out, I guess, during deadlines with certain other comics. He was notorious for doing three or four pages. He always get credit for three or four pages. But this one, he did the whole kit and caboodle. And, uh, and if, you know, for those of us who were kids when uh, those books were being sold off the racks, I remember because I was buying Captain Marvel back then. And I remember getting like the issues before that where, you know, Gil Kane was drawn and, you know, decent enough. But man, was there a big difference in quality once Jim Starlin took over that book. Big time. Okay. I'm going to just go back to the, it's just the, the action scene on this cover with the Hulk and everything else. And you'll see also Pete's going to take over with issue 26, which I do not have. I need it. So here we go right here. So this right here is the introduction into the Captain Marvel book of this guy up in the corner here, which of course is everybody's favorite villain, Thanos, right? So here, and I believe this, uh, I'm not sure if this is a Starlin cover or not, or if this is a Gil Kane cover, I'm not really sure, but he did in, indeed do uh, the inside. And I wanna get you some, you know, some classic, you know, Starlin just had this way with like sci-fi storyline and artwork. And, you know, here we've got, you know, the thing is obviously in this issue from the Fantastic Four, so they kind of go at it a little bit, but more importantly, uh, Thanos is starting to kind of pull the strings behind the scenes, and that would be a recurring theme going forward. And I want to see if I can, I mean, just look at some of these battle battle scenes. Starlin was so good at that. And they save the, uh, the appearance of Thanos till the very end of the book. And I want to get that for you here. There he is. I mean, this is just iconic. So even though he already had appeared in Iron Man prior to this, this is like his kind of big reappearance. And this, of course, would go on to lead, you know, battles with Captain Marvel. And then we're going to get to the next series. We're going to talk about battles with that character. And then he would basically go after the entire Marvel Universe, which, of course, is the Infinity War saga. But uh, we'll talk about that uh, later on. So Bill's got some more Captain Marvels to show. Is this your 27? Again, Look at the look at the action on the cover. It's a splash page in itself, you know. Just the detail. Just well, for those who are not aware, those other two characters on the bottom there, that's actually Thanos's father and brother. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, here he is, dominating the backdrop of this cover. And this is issue twenty-eight. And this is this is a great cover. This is oh, probably yeah. like one of the better cap. This is the if you're looking for a, a tattoo of Captain Marvel, this is the one you should get. This I like one. I like one coming up a little bit better, but they're both great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. It's, and and number twenty eight is the only one. Twenty eight is the only one I need out of that whole run. I still need that one. Yeah, that's a okay. great one. The controller. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, an Iron Man villain. But this is a great action scene. Yep. And then you might be thinking of this one. That is indeed the one I'm thinking of. Yep. It's the next one. That's the one. This is great too. 
Yeah. I know it's this one. You're going to say it's this one, number no, 33? No, it's the one you just had. It's the one you just had. Oh, really? That's my favorite right there. Yep. Number 30, but, was that 31? He, was still, he really draws this guy very well. Yeah. <laughs> They're all iconic. And you know what? Pull, pull that last one back up again, because I want to point out to a lot of folks. So we got down at the bottom, you got Drax the Destroyer. And I know there's a lot of people who are into the Guardians of the Galaxy and Drax, you know, as, as uh, played by Dave Bautista in the films. But look at how different these characters looked back in the day. So Drax looked nothing like what you see in the films back then. And an incredibly strong, strong character. Uh, the first Captain Marvel in my collection when I was a teenager, compliments of my friend Tony, who, the late Tony, who late passed Tony. away last year. Yep. He gave me all his doubles. He had a double of this, and that was the first one in my collection. Uh, this, I love this Nitro cover. Yeah, it's a good one. Really good. And this is the last that he, he was also writing the story for these, correct? Yep. Right? So he's doing kind of following the footsteps of Jack Kirby. He just wasn't editing. He was doing the art and telling the story. And that's it for Captain Marvel. Another one of his babies where he came in after it was already in existence was a short run title was Warlock. <laughs> Again, if you want to tattoo a Warlock, this is it right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a hold of this within the past year. Um, just finished this run recently with this issue number 10 which we just showed off recently in my recent acquisitions this is another great issue because Thanos actually teams up with Captain Marvel and they fight together they're actually allies in this issue oh, Adam Warlock you mean? Pretty, okay yep yep yeah let's see you guys want to take a look at that let's see if I can find something yeah. Ah, let's be careful. Ah, there we go. Ah, page one. Yeah. Classic Star started off. Classic Starling. So you got Pip the Troll there too, another great character created by Starling. There's a good page right here. Nice splash page there. Oh, yeah. There's some detail. Another excellent back cover with my man, Evil Knievel. <laughs> this was such a great toy. <laughs> Wish I still had it. It might be worth something. Yeah. But you got to have the box. I just don't usually hang it. <laughs> Found another one. Another full page. Oh, there that. you go. That's great. How you like kids like that, huh? Very yeah, cool. I thought so. <laughs> he had a way with cosmic characters and, and cosmic like sci-fi storylines. There's no one like him. Just the way ahead of his time. Yeah, that's it. So that was Warlock number 11. He went and finished the run. It went 15 issues. And this is issue 12. And again, he was writing and doing the artwork for Warlock. Kind of a cool character. What well, first appeared in Thor, and they called him what? Him? Yeah, well, technically he first appeared in Fantastic Four in the cocoon, but his first appearance outside of the cocoon, yeah, was in, uh, was in Thor as him. Correct. Issue 14, another cool cosmic-looking kind of sci-fi cover. Yep. And the last in the run is also good with, and it's also got Thanos on the cover again, over here. This is issue 15, the last in the run of Warlock. Definitely pretty cool. I don't know why this didn't last that long, but again, he's not like a mainstream superhero, so I guess superhero fans didn't take to him. And notice on that cover too, you got Gamora on the cover there. Also from Guardians of the Galaxy in modern day. Who? Gamora. His oh, daughter? I he said moron. No. <laughs> okay, that's why I had to double check. All Gamora, right. his daughter. And, you know, while we're on the subject of Warlock, okay. he, also, he also appeared in Strange Tales and Jim Starlin all, for a couple of issues, and I have one of them, which is issue number uh, 179. Again, classic 
Starlin artwork there. So three issues of that, I believe is 178, 179, and 180, if I remember correctly. So didn't want to leave that out. What else? What else we got? He appeared on a lot of stuff. I'm going to jump forward in time. Probably the last thing in my collection or the newest in time. Frame. This is like, I don't know if this is 1987 or 1990, somewhere in there, the Infinity War. This was a six part story. And he, he wrote the story, but he did not do the artwork, but the artist tried to follow his style, as you can see. Very cool. And I forgot who the artist is on this, but you can find out. Yeah, I think George Perez and a bunch of other guys. I mean, that that whole Infinity storyline ran, you know, you had the Infinity War, Infinity Gauntlet. I mean, it was just, and Starlin was the mastermind behind the whole thing and just an epic piece of comic book storytelling, the entire thing. I have, and we've done shows on this before where we've showed all the uh, the graphic novels and the trades. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. You call it trifold cover, baby. Yeah. You could almost take this off and hang it up on your wall. You could. Yeah. But I'm not doing that. <laughs> and first page of Thanos again. There we go. Very cool. So I had to get that. I just picked that up recently, last year. Um, another one, probably from the late 80s, volume two of the Silver Surfer, yep. issue 50, right? You got Thanos and the Silver Surfer there. And this is a metallic foil cover. The Silver Surfer is a what you call like a 3D stamp. It's all like reflective silver and it's 3D. Like the head of George Washington on a quarter. Yep. Did I tell you he did Silver Surfer number 50? I liked it so much, I bought two copies. Oh, there, why not, three. right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, doing homework last night for this episode, I learned something. That he did the cover for Iron Man 100, which is one of the first comics. This is the first comic in my collection. If you ever heard this story, I picked up three comics in a supermarket and my mom bought them for me. And this was one of the three. And this is just, I would, so last night when I found out that he was the artist for this, I, I just couldn't believe it. So that, I was a pleasant surprise. Because and and that's, a, that's a cover we've showed so many times and talked about so many times on this show. And I, I, that's an iconic cover for me too. And I never knew it was, it was Jim Starlin. So it was I, news to me too. But we knew that he did this cover. Yep. We knew that he did the inside. And this is, uh, helped with, uh, Joe Sinnott. This is ah. Jim Stall and Joe Sinnott. And the Blood, Blood Brothers and Drax the Destroyer. Yeah. And the Blood Brothers fought the Hulk. I have them in the Hulk as well. And he also, he came on board for this issue, 56. And I just picked this up last year. And I believe this is Joe Sinnott again with him. Yeah, no, this is Starlin and Esposito. Mike ah, Esposito. Okay. Got you. So then I found out when Pete put me on the task, another Jim Starlin cover. Oh, yeah. Marvel team up number 27. Now, you look at the way he draws the Hulk. Yep. He has a unique, I like the way he does the face of the Hulk. Got a little bit of a Frankenstein flat head, but it works. I like it. <laughs> and I found out that he did the art. For Spider-Man, 113 and 114. Pretty cool. And then another surprise, one of my favorite Spider-Man covers from when I was a teenager. He did the inside art for this issue as well. Spider-Man 187. This is Keith Pollard or Pollard. I don't know how to say his Pollard. name. Yeah, I think it's Pollard, yeah. And he Keith did the art on the cover. And then Jim got around. <laughs> Daredevil, 105. I'm not sure if this is a Starlin cover. I know he did the work on the inside. But it kind of looks like it could have been him on the, on the cover. Uh, you know, it looks like Romita to me. 
It looks yeah. so familiar. Yeah. But I looked it's... for a signature, but I didn't see anything. Again, scratching my head. He did the inside work. Yeah, Him and Joe Simmons. That's a great one. And Probably I, one I of my I, favorite Hulk versus Thing battles right there. I like this better than the Fantastic Four issue, the cover, 112. Because there's more background art. The other one is just black background yeah. art. 112, yep. Fantastic Four. Um, I'm going to treat you kids. Why? Because I got this book signed by Joe Sinnott last year. And I wanted him to sign on the inside. So there it is. Can you see that? Here we go. Joe Sinnott. Jim Starlin and Joe Sinnott. Well, you might as well show some of the artwork now that you got that open. Really? Yeah. All right, so we'll do the splash page again. There you go. On page. He draws a great thing. He does. I just want to show this little drawing of the Hulk. And it's just like the guy's thinking about the Hulk. It's just the way. <laughs> the leader's in here. Oh, there you go. Action scene right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is a knuckle down drag out fist fight to the max. I always loved that one when I was a kid. I'm so glad I finally got it in my collection. And then the cherry on top is I have the signature autograph from Joe Sinnott on it. Yep. You know? And it's funny because when I gave Joe five books, he signed them, but I gave him a, a Thor issue and he spent so much time looking through that. This is a great page right there. Yep. That's so cool. If you love the Hulk, you, you can't be disappointed with what you're seeing here. And I guess they lead up to the end with Iron Man, next issue, which I don't have. But that's, uh, this is a classic book to have for classic battles between the Hulk and the Thing, right here. Yep. Marvel well, Feature Presents. One of the best. Number 11. This only went 13 issues, didn't it, this run? It didn't go I, very far. I think so. That was basically a precursor to Marvel 2 and 1. And isn't the first issue have the Defenders on it, I believe? Yeah, I, yes. First four issues, were, right? Yep, yep. So definitely a nice little side title. Yep. Uh, do you have anything, or you want me to keep going? Uh... I can, yeah, let me, they'll throw a couple out here. Um, so Jim actually did not draw the cover art on this. This is a Rich, Buck, Rich Buckler cover art, but uh, Jim did the inside. So this is Avengers 107. Okay, pretty cool cover there. All right, uh, we got Amazing Adventures uh, featuring the Beast. So he actually drew the cover of this one, which is a great cover. Uh, Beast fighting one of my favorite villains, the Juggernaut. And he drew the cover art and the uh, inside art on issue number 17. Now this, I've had this, I bought this on the stands. As you can see, this is in pretty rough shape. And at some point I'm going to have to, because the cover is like all sorts of mangled on the side. looks like it's Did you been- you keep that under your bed? I don't know where it was. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it was in the attic and in a, in a box. Like and, stepped on a few times. Yeah. Well, you know what I remember, you know, I was really into these uh, beast issues back when I was a kid. And like I said, this is, 20 cents. So this is what, 1971, two, three, something like that. So this has seen a lot of miles, but uh, that's a, a very good Starling cover. And he did the inside as well on that. Uh, he also worked for a couple of issues. And when you really think about it, because of how well he worked on these kind of cosmic, like almost like sci-fi type things, uh, he actually worked on a couple of issues of Dr. Strange volume two. So he did number 23. This is actually a Gene Colan cover art, but he did the inside. Uh, he also did number 24. Number 25. And I'm pretty sure this is him doing the artwork on the cover. And then number 26. And you know, if you have any of these, this is, uh, he was actually a really good fit on this series, I thought. 
a couple others here. So he worked on an issue of Conan, believe it or not, uh, issue number 64. This is a Johnny Bushima cover, but he, uh, Jim did the inside. And as you know, uh, John Bushima was actually working on this title at the time. That Conan book, Al, Al Milgram worked with Stalin on that. So I guess- Yeah, I'll, they worked I'll... on it together. So you know what, that's a good point. So I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna take a look at that because they had add, the two of them working together added a little different flavor here. So- uh, And Al's a great artist too. Yeah. So like, look here, we, you can tell, I mean, from that first page, all right, it's definitely, definitely has this, the Starlin touch to it. Uh, but as you kind of get through the book, you'll notice some subtle differences. But it's definitely, definitely has the Jim Starlin feel, look and feel to it. And again, another character that maybe he could have worked on a little bit longer, and I think it really works here. Um, trying to see. Ah, there, there we go. <laughs> That's classic Starlin right there. That is a great sp splash page right there. That looks oh, like you know. the Conan fighting Conan. Yeah, you know. It's, you know, he's got all these oracles. Here's another really cool one. So it's just, you know, this is classic, classic Jim Starlin. So there's that. And the last two I got to show, um, he, of course, was the creator, the co-creator of uh, Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. So uh, he worked on, uh, what was the name of that? Um, is that Marvel? Special Edition. I think it'd be a Marvel Special Edition. So that's when he debuted the uh, first three, you know, three issues Number there. 15. Yep. And then uh, what they, so it was 15 and 16. So what they did was then they started uh, Master of Kung Fu on his own issue. But instead of starting with issue number one, they started with issue 17. So that's this one right here. Wow, that's nice. And then uh, he also did issue number 24. And he did not do the cover. This is a Gil Kane cover, but he also did the artwork on here. And I'll open this up real quick so we can take a look at that. And uh, that would be the last that he would work on the Master of Kung Fu series. So kind of a shame that his creation, he kind of didn't stay too long on. But uh, so here, there's a bunch of artists working on this particular one. Al Milgram is also involved here. Let's see if I can get you a good, uh, here's some good action page. There you go. So yeah, so he shows that he could like work on a lot of different type of titles. So, uh, and so he, you know, we've got barbarians and uh, martial arts guys, the cosmic stuff, master of the mystic arts, all sorts of things. What else you got there, Bill? I'm gonna go back to Amazing Adventures. What'd you show? Number 16? Uh, I showed 16 and 17. This is 15. Again, Great cover. The the Griffin. This was the first. I just picked this up like four years ago at a flea market, but uh, this is the first amazing adventures in my collection with the Beast, and also my first comic ever with the Griffin as a villain. I don't have any, so this was the first pickup. Now I think two with the Griffin. Also, he did the cover, I believe, for this one, issue twenty-seven, with Kill Raven. And that is a that is a great cover. Yeah, great cover. I like this one. This one even better. Oh, uh, look at another that! Another great, <laughs> another great Hulk. These were reprints, Marvel superheroes of Tales to Astonish. Yep. So this is a reprint, but Jim did the cover. Obviously, the inside's a reprint, which he didn't do. But this is such a great. This is probably one of my favorite Jim Stalin Hulk covers ever. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. And then I found out yesterday that he actually worked on the Hulk. This is an Ernie Ernie Chan cover. And this is just before my subscription kicked in, like one or two issues before my high school subscription kicked in. But Jim Stalin did the art on the inside of this. Uh, talked about Jimmy getting around. Marvel premiere, again, more Doctor Strange. Yep. Great cover, man. That is really good. Yeah. And I think he did the inside art. Let's take a peek. Let's see if uh, he did the inside.
Jim Starlin artist. We'll just kick it off with the front page there. See the credits? Can you read the credits? Yep. You coming through? Am I centered? Go over there a little bit. How's that? Keep going. There we go. Boom. Jim Starlin. And who else? Giacola and Hunt were the inkers. Okay. This has some really, this has a lot of good eye candy in here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Definitely. See what I'm saying? He was a he was a perfect match, I think, for the Doctor Strange character. I mean, if anybody other than like uh, Ditko or Colin could work on that character, I think Starlin is like logical choice. Yeah, definitely got that sci-fi flair, that mystical supernatural touch to his yep. art. Yeah. You know? Looking for another example. Yeah, here we go. I like this page right there, right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much that's the only one I know from Marvel Premiere that he did. But if you're gonna find anything else before I close this up. Uh, the last page is cool. Doctor Strange, nice little pose there. Yes indeed. Um you got anything else? That's it. That's all I got. I got some more. Cool. You ready? Let me just I'm ready. Through. Hit yeah. us. Adventures into fear. Oh uh, yeah. Now he did the inside art for this, right? Yep. He didn't do the cover. I don't think. I, no, I don't think he did the cover, but he definitely did the inside. And I will say a little bit different take on the man thing character. I, I was looking at that this morning and uh, definitely he's more, I, I don't know who inked that particular issue, but uh, man thing is definitely more brown, less kind of muck looking, but I think pretty effective. I don't know. I think it worked. Oh yeah. Right. Very nice. I've, I've bought this like last year. There you go. Right there. Yep. See the use of brown? Very different. Looks kind of delicate. I got to watch the top of the cover. Uh, anyway, this is what I was looking for a nice full page right here. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Jimmy had it down. <laughs> Still does it, man. Yeah. Yeah. trying to save time learned something new yesterday i didn't know he did this cover i just picked this up like six or seven months ago back in the fall where monsters dwell number 20 yeah i didn't know either that's a good one that's awesome cover man yep uh i didn't know this until i read it but jim starlin and alan weiss inside art that's a last, Romita, that's a that's a Romita cover, pretty kick ass too. Yes, and it's the last issue of the four part series of the cat, as you know, who eventually turned into Tigress. Yep. Tigra. Tigra. Okay. Yeah, the cat. Definitely cool series, four part series, and then she eventually became a member of the Defenders later on in the late seventies. That's correct. Found out something else new last night in my Jimmy Starlin research. He did the. Cover for Cull. Yeah, that is definitely that is definitely him. Yeah, I, I have that too. I never even realized that. That is definitely started. I that last night. I didn't know that. Then Pete told me something else last night that he worked. Also, he, did you know that he flipped and went over to DC? Yeah, he did a ton of work with DC. I didn't know that. Yeah, he did some Green Lantern, right? Yeah, did a lot of Batman and Superman. Superman. Yeah. Superman. DC Presents was kind of like a team, like a Marvel team up of Superman and whoever. And he did one of those issues with Superman and the Green Lantern, but I don't have it. I have the third and fourth issues of those DC Presents with Superman and those are with a different character, like the, the Metal Men. Yeah. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think here. Uh, so he didn't do the flash. If you'll notice up on top, there's a second story with Firestorm. And that, 
that's the artwork that Jim did. He didn't work on the Flash title. He worked on the backup story, Firestorm. Forgot to mention that. But it was just for three issues. Uh, 294, this is 295. Again, he did the Firestorm artwork. I'll show you one more time. Gorilla Grodd. That's 290. I'm going backwards. <laughs> that was 290. That's 290. 295. This was 296. And this is the first one, 294. I went backwards, kids. Sorry. You know the story with my shades. <laughs> so I had Firestorm number one, but I sold it a few months ago. But I didn't really like the story. It kind of reminded me of Captain Marvel with the, the Jim Jones connection. Yeah. Clicking the bracelets, I'm the wimp. I need the superhero here, and then Firestorm shows up. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So I'm not sure about if he Jim did the artwork for that Firestorm number one. If I sold it, oh well, too late. Yeah, I'm pretty sure well, he didn't. Here's the the start page, of Firestorm. Yeah, that's Starlin, all right. And this isn't very long. This is only a couple of pages, like maybe. I'm looking for a good action shot. Uh, I guess the last page has some stuff that pops. No, I was looking for a nice full page. But that's it for my Jim Starlin collection. You got anything else? Are you done? That's it? That's it. We, I think we covered most of his major stuff here. So... Uh... Hope you guys enjoyed this other artist uh, spotlight, the great Jim Starlin. Yes, uh, we hope you like our show and tell of his artwork, because we sure do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Bill and I have actually a lot of other artists that we're going to tackle. We're also going to start doing, uh, which you'll see over the coming days and weeks here, we're going to start doing some great artist inker teams. All right. So these, these two, you know, two guys who worked on an extended run on a specific book or books that really, really did some special stuff. So, uh, might as well give it away, the first one we're going to do. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the Jack Kirby and Joe Sinnott team on Fantastic Four. So in this, And that's some great stuff. So we're actually going to open some of those books up and show you guys some, some really cool artwork. So, You're going to have to stay tuned because our next episode is going to be on Astonishing Tales. That Let's is correct. That. that is correct. So, uh, so I am Pete. From my buddy over there, Wild Bill, thanks for joining us here. Make sure you subscribe and tell your friends. Thanks for all your views and uh, your, all your comments. Got a lot of comments coming in now, which is good. So uh, glad to see it. And uh, we'll see you guys over the next couple of days, right? We're going to provide you as much fun content as we can while we're all on lockdown. So uh, Bill and I have been busy and uh, we're recording, using this, living on Zoom right now. So uh, anyway, guys, we'll see you in a couple of days. Take care. Bill, get us out of here. All right, guys. Thanks for being here as always. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.